so hello everyone very good morning to all of you so we are at the day 2 of web designing web series for the beginners so thank you very much all of you for joining yesterday on the day 1 i hope you have the wonderful session with akash so we will be moving ahead with the next content on uh, on today so before moving ahead we have some uh, instructions for the participants the okay the first thing is that the feedback and a uh, certificate will be provided at the last uh, day at 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 the day 5 and the second thing is that uh, we will we will have the separate link on the each day for tomorrow we will have the separate link on the youtube we will be mailing you onto your email uh, on tomorrow morning so kindly check check your mail around 9 am tomorrow for the updated link so okay thank you thank you very much all of you and i would like to invite akash sir to start today's session akash sir over to you uh thank you iren sir iren sir for the lovely introduction again uh good morning everyone welcome to day 2 of web designing web series i hope uh you are ready to learn the uh, rest of the part of html and css okay so let's get started with the day 2 yesterday uh, you know very well we have a uh, seen a basic introduction about the web designing why web designing is important and there are some tools are there and you can use the mock up and how to use some elements let's say font colors and various things right so today we will discuss about the html element that is a form table and then we will start with the css okay so i hope uh, you are ready to learn the uh, html and css okay So good morning, everyone. Welcome to this webinar web series. Okay. So let me share my screen. Okay. I hope my screen is visible and you can see the screen. Okay. So let's say uh, if we talk about the day two, you know very well uh, we will discuss for the remaining part of HTML, right? So you know very well. Yesterday we have seen a basic tag of HTML, right? and today we will discuss about the important uh, tags of html that is a table form tag how to add various controls like a uh, text box radio drop down and etc right and then we will uh, focus on the uh, css part that is a cascading style silk right why it is important today we will discuss okay so let's say uh, first i will give you a demonstration in the ppt and then i will implement in my computer i hope everything is good okay from your side So let's say if we talk about the HTML class day two, then uh, the most important element of HTML is that is a table and list, right? Let's say whenever you want to display some data in your website, right? The table tag is very very important, right? So for an example, let's say if you are fetching some data from your database and then you want to display in your website, so table is very useful tag. Okay. So let's say an HTML table is defined within a table tag, and each table row is defined with the tr. So tr, th, and td. This is the most important element of this ta table tag, right? So let's say a uh, tr is used for the defining the row, th is used for the table header, right? And whenever you are using a table header, your content will be aligned as a center. and it will be also display in a bold right and let's say if you want to add some data in your table then we will uh, we have to use the table td means td that means a table data we can say it's a cell so you can see uh, this is my basic example of table here you can see we have one table uh, tag inside the table tag we have one table row right we can say this is my row which contains a number and name with the help of th we can define the header let's say you can compare the uh, th and td value so in th it is a bold and center alignment i know it's not look like a center because we don't have a uh, enough height or width we can say okay so let's say uh, here you can see we have a td td1 td2 and again this is my tr so let me give a demo for this how this table will work in your html okay so don't worry uh, we have some other attributes that is bg color a border a border color and cell padding cell spacing width we can define in a two different way either we can define in a percentage 
or we can define in the pixels, right? So let's say if you define as a percentage, so it will consider as your uh, browser's width, right? So if you specify a specific size, so it will consider as a, a fixed size that will be a 500 pixels, okay? And we can also align in a center or maybe in right, right? Okay. So let's say, uh, let me give a demo for that, okay? So where is my editor? So my editor is Visual Studio Code, okay? So again, just go to your open folder and you can select your folder. So my folder is stored in the drive web series and select the folder. As you know, uh, yesterday we have seen how to add hyperlinks, how to add images and the uh, various tags such as bold, italic, underline, sub, sub, mark, br and hr, right? So let's say in day two, we will discuss for the table tag, right? So let's say if I want to create a new page, then simply click on the plus icon and specify the name that will be a table.html. So just press enter and here you can write your basic HTML tag. I know you are familiar with this tag that is HTML and then body, right? So what is next? So first of all, we have to uh, open the table tag. Let's say uh, if I uh, run my page, right? So let's say if I right click open with my default browser. So here you can see there is no table, right? But you can specify some attributes, right? Border what? So you can see we have a small border over here, okay? So let's say, for an example, I want to add some record. For that, you have to use one table row. Inside the table row, we have to create either TD or TH. But let's say, uh, if you want to display your uh, first row as a heading, then you can go with the TH option, right? So simply you can specify the TH, right? If you don't want to go with the TH, don't worry. You can specify as a TD, okay? So let's say, just copy this TH two times. Uh, I think two times is enough. So first will be a number. And second one will be a name, right? So it's done. So if I save this, if I refresh my browser, you, will uh, you can see there is one table which contains a number and name, right? So if I remove this border property, border attribute from this, and now if I refresh this, you can see there is no border, right? So let's say border is good. So undo this <laughs> command, so it's done. So let's say now I want to add some records, right? So you simply, we have to do the copy paste, copy paste. So again, the TD, so TD having one name, sorry, number, that is a one. You can specify any numbers, right? And Akas, simply, if I save this, if I refresh this, you can see we have a number, a name, and let's say, simply just copy paste, one, two, three, four, and done. So it's done, right? So let's say, if you want to add some properties, for an example, uh, we have your attributes, uh, various attributes are there, okay? So BG color, a border, a border color, a cell padding, a cell spacing, a width, and a line, right? We can write this kind of attributes, right, in your table tag. So let's say, align, center. It's done. And you can also add your images inside this cell. You can add images, you can add as a hyperlink, right? You can add any HTML code inside this table, okay? So I hope uh, this part is clear. It's very easy how to add this uh, table, okay? So let's say there is one more concept inside in the uh, table tag that is a row span and call span, right? So row span and call span, are the TD tag attribute, and these are used to specify the number of rows and column cell should span. You know the well, very uh, you know the well, uh, meaning of the span, right? The row span attribute is for the row, as well as the call span attributes is for the column. And this attribute have a numerical value. For an example, call span three will span three columns, right? So uh, you can simply implement this, right? It's very easy. 
okay so we have to cover lots of topic actually so that's why i'm giving the introduction inside the my ppt right okay so if we talk about the html list right so many times uh, we have to uh, display a uh, various uh, values such as my hobbies so you can write a uh, traveling a uh, music and coding right so you have to display your hobbies inside a particular list and we have a uh, two types of lists inside the html so first is unordered list means uh, we cannot count this number of values and second one is order list so let's say if i create new file list.html right simply copy paste and remove this table okay so let's say uh, i want to display my name like programming name like c sorry c c++ java or php and android right so you know very well if i run this page open with default browser this will display in a single line right but actually i want to display in a list order so we have a ul tag for the unordered list inside the ul tag you can use the ally tag right and in ul tag we have a various attribute like type we have a square type a disk a type circle so let me give a demonstration for that right so let's say simply i will write that is a ul that is an unordered list and then simply you can start the list item copy paste paste it here one two three four five that's it right oh, copy paste copy paste i love this feature that is a copy paste right without this you know we have to write so many code so if i refresh this you can see this is done right okay so what is next so next is let's say uh, i want to display the list uh, in an order list for an example one two three and many more right so for that what we can do we can go for the see you can also like uh, write like this for an example we have three uh, different attributes means we have one attribute having a different values circle square and disk by default we have a disk attribute right so let's say uh, i want to display my list in an order value so we have one ol tag ol stands for order list so here what we can do we can simply uh, open the code and In instead of this o ul you can simply write ol well means order list so if i refresh this you can see it start with the number that is a, a one two three and so on but let's say i want to uh, start a number with particular value so here you can see we can start the value with default case number upper case number then lower case number that is a roman values that is a i right we can also start with the k uh, a b c d that is a, a capital a small lower case upper case so let's say if i can if i can, if i specify the type that is a, a right so it will display my value like this a b c d p e, h t right so you can uh, specify any value like this you can specify the roman values so that's it okay I, I hope you are getting this point and everything is going good. Yes or no, guys? You can write in the chat section. Yes or no. Okay. So what is next? So next is, let's say, uh, we can also specify uh, a start attribute. Let's say I want to uh, start a number after a particular value. For an example, let's say, uh, just remove this type. So here you can see we have a number with one two three right and start uh 11 right so if i refresh this you can see this will start with the 11 11 12 13 14 15 and etc it's done i think so it's very easy am i right or wrong guys yes okay uh repeat once again which one okay let's say 
if you want to specify a uh, particular attributes let's say if i want to display in upper case lower case of the roman values and if i want to uh, display in a abcd capital or maybe small we can use this okay so this is the uh, start attribute let's say if i want to uh, start my number with the 11 so you can simply specify the start that is a 11 okay so what is next so next is uh, yes i can see there is one comment uh, what is td okay so td is used for the table data for an example you can see uh, i want to specify some value over here so if i remove this value if i remove this td tag so you can see this will be print outside of this data so i want to uh, display a particular record inside the table we have to specify inside the td right so TB, td stands for table data so we can say it's a cell so if you want to display something inside your cell, then we have to use a TD, OK? So uh, let's get started with the next topic. OK, I think so it's done, the PPT day two. OK, so we have lots of PPT for the today's session. I hope I will cover all the topics. OK, I hope you are uh, OK with the speed. OK, so what is next? So next is. Uh, HTML form. So if I refresh this, so you can see uh, the next topic is HTML form, right? So now let's say uh, you know very well whenever you want to create a sign up form or maybe a login form, at that time we need a uh, various controls. Let's say uh, in HTML we have different, different uh, controls that is a text box, a radio, a drop down, a file upload, and many more, right? So uh, we can also de uh, design our t uh, our form tag in a bootstrap also, right? But today we will see a basic introduction about the HTML form. So what is HTML form? So HTML forms are required when you want to collect some data from the website visitor, OK? So let's say form is a very important tag. Let's say if you are creating a website in a PHP, ASP, JSP, or maybe any server-side technology, First, you have to depend on your form tag, right? That is very, very important. I hope uh, you know very well whenever we are creating a website, form is a very important tag. Uh, form tag having a two methods, that is a get and post, right? So let's say if you are, once you are done with the web designing and let's say you are starting uh, for the web development, you need a basic knowledge of form, okay? So uh, whenever you want to define a form tag, simply you can start the opening tag. You can close your form tag like this. Okay. So inside the form tag, we can uh, write a various input elements, right? Inside the input, we have a various element that can be displayed in similar way, depending on the type attribute. Okay. So let's say uh, you can see we have an input type text, which will display uh, as a text box. If you want to uh, get some values from the user and that will be an email, so you can use the input type email. So this email property will validate whether your email is okay or not. Input type password, right? So input type password uh, will display your password in, you know very well, uh, it will be in a square disk, okay? So input type radio means let's say, whenever you want to uh, select a various values from the users, not various, actually, either we can select or, for an example, let's say gender. So at a time you can select single gender, that is a male or female. So at that time you can use the radio. But let's say if you want to use a multiple values, for an example, I love C, C++, Java, right? So maybe uh, I love various technology. So in this case, uh, we can use the checkbox, okay? So input type file is useful whenever you are uploading some photographs in your website or maybe some PDF or Word file or maybe any other file, right? So input type number. So let's say if you are taking some numbers, for an example, age, so you can use the input type number and input type submit, which is used, which is very, very important uh, input type. So let's say if you want to submit your data, then we have to use input type submit. Input type reset means, let's say if you want to clear your values, for that you can use the input type reset. Range, 
means uh let's say if you want to uh, filter out your values on basis of the range let's say whenever you are doing a shopping in the uh, local market so a uh, seller will first ask may i know your range so you will specify my range is around uh, 100 to 500 so same thing over here we can specify the range input type date uh, by default they are providing a date picker we can say uh, previously we have to create a three drop downs and on basis of that, we have to validate whether date is OK or not. But nowadays, in HTML5, we have a new properties that is input type date, input type color, and input type time, right? So don't worry. Uh, I will do one thing, simply copy paste, because we want to uh, demonstrate various things. I hope you are OK with this. If you are not OK, then I will write this code. I don't have any problem. Yes, I can understand you want to learn lots of things in the five days and you can press up the uh, concept again so simply uh what we can do so simply we can write one form tag right so let's say form tag we can specify the method so by default uh method will be get but let's say if you are providing some method so post is very secure and get is not secure but yes get method is very useful whenever you are doing a sorting and searching operation okay so let's say i'm not specifying any methods over here so here i will write input type uh text and don't forget to specify name for each control so let's say the name will be a txt one right so close this tag and what we need so whenever you are uh adding some controls don't forget to use uh, input type submit button right so input type submit is very important to take a values from the users and submit into your server so if i refresh this here you can see uh this is one text box and i will write my name so inside uh in address bar you can see there is no value so if i submit on if I click on the submit button, you can see the TXT value is Akas, right? So the form tag having a default method that is a get method. And get is not a secure method. I know why, because your data is visible in the URL. But let's say if you search on the Google, let's say if I open Google, if I type Akas Padia, so you can see Google is also using the uh, get method. You can see the URL. Let's say if it, is, if it is not visible, simply copy paste. And now I hope you can see your value is visible in your URL, right? Let's say uh, simply if I change this method, that is Akas Padia, instead of this Akas Padia, what I can do, I will write Akas Spectral Labs. So you can see the text box value is changed, right? It's done. So i can say get is not a uh, secure but yes whenever you are doing a searching and sorting operation in your website right so at that time you can use a get method okay so what is next so next is let's say uh we can specify the post method post is very secure whenever you are passing some sensitive data like your username or password so at that time you can use the post method so if i open this again so simply if I type Akas, so here you can see the value is not visible in the browser. Okay. So what is next? Simply just copy paste this. And I think so without copy paste, let me type this code. I hope uh, I will be a copy paste, copy paste. So let's say input type a password, then input type a number input type a uh, email input type a uh, date right so let's say uh don't forget to change the name right now we are actually not going to do any operation with the database but still we have to change this okay so let's say if i refresh this you can see uh we have a uh, various text boxes but it's not look good so what we can do we can create a form tag inside a table tag so you can simply write the table tag 
uh, a table having a two uh, different column one for the uh, your text box and second one for your label so what i can do simply create one tr a td one td for your label and second td for your control so simply copy paste and copy paste right so it's done so now you can see it's a proper alignment is there i know this is only for the first text box but what we have to do we have to simply copy paste this code multiple times so this is for name this is for password and then just copy paste don't worry i'm doing just copy paste don't worry about this code i know it's ups and down ups and down okay it's done okay actually uh, we haven't write any code so don't worry so what we can do we can specify input type password we can specify input type number input type uh, let's say date date input type email so here you can specify input type email so it's done so if i refresh this website you can okay so if i refresh this website so you can say it's a proper alignment is there and we can see this is our date picker so input type date we can see we have a by default a date picker having a various option for the year selections right okay so let's say if i click on the submit there is no action so what we have to do we have to specify some validation let's say i want to specify some validation let's say require so make it require so it will give you a Yes, input tile is also available. I know there are lots of input uh, input type is there. Okay, so here you can see uh, this is my text box with validation, right? So if I write some thing over here, it's done. So this is password, and let's say this is my uh, input type number. You can see I cannot write any characters, right? I can only type the numbers. It's done. Okay. So let's say I want to restrict some values. Let's say the gender, the age will be starts from one to max hundred. So you can specify the values. So let's say if I type nine hundred ninety nine, first we have to write this value. See, value must be less than or equals to hundred. Okay, and let's say if I type wrong email ID, first actually we have to fulfill this requirement. That is a ninety nine. And then you can see, please include and add the rate in the email address and blah, blah, blah. Right. So you can see uh, in HTML5, we have some attribute like a validation, input type date, input type colors. Right. So simply copy paste input type color, input type tail, input type URL and many more. So if I type input type color, so you can select we have a selection for the color and just a second see we can select the colors right i want to specify particular colors so simply you can use this so previously for the date picker and color we have to use a jquery uh, jquery plugins let's say if i search in the google jquery date picker so yeah, there is lots of uh, ui controls are there in a jquery and we have to use this kind of jquery controls in our website but don't worry i will also give you a demonstration for this in day four okay so in day four we will discuss about the uh, jquery how to add jquery validation how to add jquery data tables and many more things okay so let's say uh, my input type name password number date and let's say let me give you one more controls that is a checkbox, a radio, a drop down, a file, and text area. That's it. I know there are lots of controls are there. So uh, color, after the color, we can go for the input type file. So you can specify the file, then a radio, input type radio. For radio, actually, we have to specify a value over here. So this will be a mail. And then I hope you are enjoying this webinar very well. 
you can write in the chat section yes or no i know it's a very basic things but yes the webinar and web series is organized for the specially uh, beginners right so that's why we have to cover a basic things also you can see we have option for the uh, gender male female either we can select male or female but let's say in some cases people also facing some problem because they are specifying a different name let's say here you can see a uh, txt1 and txt99 so if you specify a different name then you can see we can select both the option i know it's not a good idea but let's say what we have to do we have to specify a same name for the radio okay so same thing uh you can copy paste as a checkbox so instead of this radio what we can do we can write the checkbox check box so i love uh, html and the css i hope you also love this html and css okay i know you are also waiting for the css yes so you can see we have html and css either user can select the both the option or maybe none of them right so that's why in checkbox you can either select or no but in radio we have to select some value okay so after the checkbox radio uh, we have one more uh, control that is a drop down let's say to select some ct or uh, maybe some value especially gender right uh, select so first we have to uh, specify a select tag which will give you one option right like this but inside the select we have to specify some option to select some values so let's say here i will specify a uh, amdaba then uh um, let's say india i know it's not good but let's say this is my amdabad this is my india okay so you will get your option like this okay and you can also specify uh, specify a values let's say in many times let's say we are doing a web development in maybe in any server side technology we have to display something and we have to uh, store in database something different so for that time you have to use the value attributes right so simply you can specify the value attributes over here so it will display a name that is amdabad but in in database it will store a h m or i and b okay so it's done so if i refresh this you can see okay so let's say if i open a particular website that is a olx or maybe a different website it's not loading okay so it's done so here you can see uh we have a different just a second so here you can see uh, it's a drop down is there right so let's say if you press control u you can see a source code for that so if you type a select what is this selection tag or you can simply write the options but actually they are using a different technology you can see this is a totally uh, json base but it's, it's okay no problem we will uh, give you a different out uh, different website okay so most of the website having this kind of drop downs with the values for the user and second value for the back end so uh, we are done with the file radio a checkbox where is checkbox i think i have overwrite the code okay so last one is a text area we can say it's a big tag box okay so text area let's say if you want to add your address right or maybe uh text area so inside the text area you can see we can drag this text box like this okay but let's say i want to specify some columns and rows then we can specify the calls that will be a 15 so you can see there is a some change and the rows it's not rows it's rows 50 so you can see this is very very large text box right so we can resize it 
but you can specify a 10 that will be a good right and i want to specify the calls and the calls will be around 55 not 555 just 55 see you can see so here you can uh, write freely without uh, entering some values so if we want to print any message instead of number of file chosen in attribute then what we have to do print any message instead of number of file chosen in the file okay so for that you can use a css or jquery uh, in jquery we have a uh, different controls right okay so let's say uh, it's done so this is a basic html tag that you can use in your form tag i hope uh, this is done for the html but let's say let me give a quick tool for from this ppt so this is input type text be with me guys uh it's time to uh, cover this ppt in next five minutes the so input type text for the text box input type email for the email input type password for the password input type radio for the radio right you can see this is a code and this one is output then input type checkbox you have to write the input type checkbox and your output will be like this input type file you can see this is input type file input type number you can see the mean and max value input type submit which is used for submitting your data right so input type reset if you want to reset your values right okay and input type color okay so i can see there is one comment input type color is used for what so let's say uh many times a client need a dynamic uh color in their website for an example right now we are working for one of the client and client uh, needs a daily a new color in his admin panel so uh, daily he is calling me hey akash i want to change the color of the uh, menu bar right so uh, what I did, uh, I have given one control for the uh, input type color selection. So user or admin will select the color and that color will be stored inside the database. So whenever website is loading, we are first of all fetching a data from the database. And on basis of that, it will change the color of the menu, right? So input type date for the selection of date, input type range, yes. So you can use this range to specify some range Let's say if you are uh, using a uh, Zabong, Mintra, there is an option for the range, right? See, it's look like this. You can specify your mean and max value, okay? So uh, these are the default properties uh, that you can use a placeholder, a mean, a max, right? A required, a steps, and the max, autofocus, check, max length, you know very well we have uh, seen some of the properties name size type and value if you want to display a particular uh, default value for that we have to specify a value attribute okay so finally this is a, a text area okay so uh, this is a select tag okay so there is one more comment sir what is difference between visual studio and Visual Studio Code. Okay, so Visual Studio Code is a free editor which is given and developed by the uh, Microsoft. And Visual Studio is an IDE, right? Which is used to uh, create a .NET web application, right? Okay, so Visual Studio is not available as a free of cost. Yes, but you can download the community version. It's very bulky size, right? But Visual Studio Code is available in all the platforms and you can simply download it and you can write a code in any technologies. Okay, so HTML select tag. So you can see we have to select a various options and that's it. I hope uh, HTML part is almost completed. So now let's focus on the CSS. I hope you are uh, ready to learn the CSS. Okay, am I right? Okay, I'm waiting for your comments. Okay, so up to this, we have a seen a basics of uh, HTML, right? It's not basic. Uh, I tried to cover almost 70 part of the HTML. But yes, with the help of uh, CSS, HTML is nothing because let's say if you want to create a good layout or uh, maybe a good colors in your website, for that, we have to use a CSS, right? 
So let's say, if let's talk about this CSS. So what is CSS? CSS stands for, what it stands for? You can write in the comment, CSS stands for, I'm waiting for your comments. Okay, so uh, CSS stands for the cascading style sheet. Okay, uh, there is one more comment. Database connectivity is not possible, as I told you yesterday. Again and again, I am saying the same statement. Database connectivity is not possible. Okay, so keep in mind these things in next time. Okay, so uh, let's say what is CSS. So CSS stands for the cascading style sheet. And the CSS used to design your HTML tags. Let's say uh, we have one table. Let's say if you are uh, designing a furniture or maybe uh, some good furniture in your house. So you know very well we have a wooden that is a totally structure based. To design, we have to use a Formica, right? So Formica will be available in any designing. So same thing over here. CSS stands for the cascading style sheet. And CSS is used to design HTML tags. Right, and CSS describe how HTML elements display on web, and with the help of CSS, we can save a lot of work, and it can control the layout of multiple web page all at once within an external site seal style sheet. Okay, so let's say if we talk about the CSS, what actually CSS do? So you can add new looks in your old HTML documents. So let's say if you talk about the previous uh, website, which is built in maybe 2000, uh, 2000 or maybe 1995, right? At that time, the website was totally a basic layout will be there, right? There is no any designing part will be there because at that time we don't have enough internet connection, right? Okay. So let's say you can completely change the look of your website with only a few changes in CSS code, okay? So who invented the CSS? So World Wide Web Constream CSS was invented on October 10, 1994 and maintained by the group of people within the W3C, right? So there are some advantages of CSS. I know uh, CSS saves times. Let's say if you want to design a particular layout in all the pages, so CSS will save your time. This will load your page faster, I know. In some of case, it will take some time and easy to maintain your layout. Let's say if customer says, I want to change the background color of the website. So normally uh, it will take hardly uh, one second because we are using an external layout. So once I change in main file, it will reflect you all the pages. So we can also uh, do a multiple device compatibility. It says as a uh, mobile device responsive, right? And the global web standards. And one more thing that is the offline support. We can say we can write in the offline. Okay. So these are the CSS syntax. Let's say uh, CSS is quite difficult compared to HTML. If you are a beginner, okay. The selector points to HTML elements. So we have a different uh, different selectors: uh, class base, ID base, or tag base. Okay. Don't worry. We will discuss in the next slide. So. Uh, in the CSS, we have to write the property in the value inside the curly braces, okay? To separate the various property, we have to use a colon, right? Semicolon, okay? So CSS declares uh, always end with a semicolon, okay? So here you can see it's end with the semicolon. Here it's also end with the semicolon. So this is called as a property and then colon your value, okay? So let's say, uh, let me give you one demo. So for an example, here I'm taking, uh, let's start the new code, css1.html. So HTML, entire the, okay, sorry, body. Okay, sorry, I think so. Slip off keyboard, okay, you can say. So let's say this is my H1, right? And now I want to change the color of this H1. I want to change the font size. For that, what we can do? What we can do? So let's say uh, simply 
uh, let me give you some theory part, then we will discuss for the uh, practical. Because in CSS, we have a three different ways to declare the CSS. Okay, so let me give you an introduction for that. So, how to add CSS in HTML? So, there is one more question: how to add CSS in your HTML? Okay, so let's say we have a three different ways. First is an inline style. Second one is an internal CSS. Third one is an external style sheet, right? So inline style means you can write your CSS in your HTML tag. Then the second is internal style sheet means you can write your uh, CSS inside your HTML page. And then uh, external style sheet means you can write or you can create a separate file for your HTML or CSS templates, okay? So let me give you a detailed introduction for this three different uh, ways. So first you can see we have one P tag. So inside the P tag, we can specify a inline CSS. So whenever you want to define a inline CSS for that, we have to write a style tag. Inside the style, we have to define the uh, key and value, right? Attribute and value. So let's say this is a color and color having an attribute uh, value is 20, uh, blue, right? So this content will be uh, display in a blue color, okay? So this is the first example of inline. Don't worry, uh, I will give you a demonstration for that. The second is internal CSS. Means let's say I want to change a color of all H1 tag, which is available in my particular page. So if I type every time inline CSS, it will save, not it will save, it will waste my time. Because let's say I have a 10 HTML uh, H1 tag in my single page. So we have to write the same code again and again, maybe up to 10 times, right? So what we can do, we can specify H1 over here. And this uh, H1 CSS will reflect to your all HTML text. That is H1 actually. And the last one is uh, external CSS. For an example, uh, I'm creating a website for one of my client and the website having a three different page, a home page about us and contact us. So I want to reflect the same designing for all the pages. So what we can do, we can create a separate file and we can call the CSS in each and every pages, right? So these are the three different ways that we can use. So let me give you demonstration for this, okay? Okay, so let's say, uh, just a second. Okay, I can see, okay. So let's say uh, how to write this CSS. So let's say if this is my uh, name that is Akas Padia, right? And this one is Akas Technolabs. Okay. And the third one is Akas Infotech. Okay. So this is done. So what I can do now, let's say if I open this page, you know very well this will display a three different output in H1, right? But let's say if we talk about the inline CSS. To specify the inline CSS, here we can write style. Inside the style, you can see we have various attributes. There are lots of lots of attributes are there. We can also specify a CSS3 properties, right? So don't worry, tomorrow I will give a demonstration for the CSS3, some effect, okay? That is most effects are there. So let's say if I specify the color and you can see we have lots of colors are there. So you can see this is the colors. And if you want to specify or if you want to select a particular color, then you can also use the hash value. Let's say if I open the Google and uh, CSS color code, right? So you know very well we have a RGB combination or so I think so yes this is a list of colors okay I think so just just a second RGB color maker or picker so you can see Google is also providing this kind of colors so you can specify the CMY uh, 
CMYK, you can get the RGB color combination and hex value. So if you are uh, using a CSS, then you have to specify the hex value, right? So here you can see uh, there is one more. Mm, it's will size, sorry. It's not a. So here you can select the color like this. I love blue color. So just go to here. Yes, I love this blue color. So simply copy this color and paste it over here. Okay, it's done. Okay, so if I refresh this, my page, you can see it's changed. I love this color. Okay, so let's say if you want to specify a different colors, I also love a red color. But yes, you can highlight the red color, dark, yellow, right? So color is also important thing. You can select this color. So here you can specify the same style, a color. That's it. It's done. So this is called as a inline CSS. Inline CSS means you can define your property inside your HTML tag, right? But let's say what I want to do, I want to define an internal CSS. For the internal CSS, what we can do, we can uh, define one style tag. Inside the style tag, what I can do, simply I will write h1. So this h1, let's say, uh, I love color black. Black is actually, it's a default color. So red, right? So if I refresh this, you can see. See, we can see the priority. By default, the first priority will be given to the inline CSS. Second priority is given to the uh, internal CSS. See, we, over here, we have specified the inline CSS. That's why the red color is not applied over here. You can see, right? If you want to display your output like this, you can do this simply. You can specify. And you can, yes, we can do this. And we can also in, uh, add some extension for the live preview. OK. OK, so let's say this is a, a internal CSS and this one is an inline CSS. If I remove this tag from here and if I refresh this now, you can see our H1 tag color is changed. Why? Because here we have not specified any inline CSS. That's why the priority is set to the internal CSS. So if I refresh this, you can see. OK, the third option is that is external. Let's say what is external? I want to create a separate file. And inside the separate file, uh, I want to specify some values so that I can use that values in a different pages. OK, so what we have to do, we have to create a new file. And and we have to specify some values. Let's say let's go to here, create a new file name it generally uh, people are using the style dot css right so you can specify this name or you can specify any name it's not required but yes most of the website having a style dot css so i recommended use the standard name okay so here what you can do uh you can write that is your h1 so this is my h1 tag simply copy paste and specify yellow i had this yellow color it's okay so let's say uh, I want to specify uh, some body color. So body will be a reflect on this part. So body, we can specify the background color. And uh, I love this color. That's it. OK. And we can also increase this font size, but it's not required. So you can see my separate file is created. And now I want to load this CSS file over here. So inside the head tag, what we can do first we have to specify the link and relational will be a style sheet sty le sheet okay and type will be a text x slash css and the reference will be href that is style.css it's done so this is link and that is related as a the relation as a style sheet. And you can see this is my reference. So if I refresh this, if I run this in the browser, you can see my color is changed, right? So here you can see uh, my color is totally changed of the background. 
So let's say if I uh, apply the same code in my different page, that is a demo that we have done in the first day. So if I replace, if I run this, and you can see the background color is changed. And you can also see the H1 tag color is changed. That is yellow, right? OK. So what is next? So uh, CSS1 and demo having the same file. So let's say if I change the color of background color, the tomato, <laughs> tomato color. If I change this color and if I refresh over here, color is changed. It's look good. You can also refresh this. The tomato color is changed in both the files. OK, so it's done. Almost this is a basic uh, concept of the CSS that is an internal, a inline, and external. So let's say if we go to our CSS1.html, here you can see uh, we have a specify the H1 color is yellow in the external file, right? If you go to your CSS1.html, here you can see we have specified the color that is a red. And here you can see we have specified color blue. So if I remove this, right? So just be with me. See, if I refresh this, OK. So you can see the second priority goes to your red color. You can see. But if I refresh, the, if I delete this code, and now you can see the color will be changed. That will be a yellow. Why? Because inside this style.css, we have defined the yellow color. So if I refresh, one, two, three, color is changed. OK? So I hope you got this point, the property and their priority. OK? So if I refresh this, or if I uh, write undo, so it's changed. I hope you are clear with the uh, basics of CSS. OK? OK, I can see the comments. OK, just a second. OK, uh, I can see there is one comment. Uh, please define internal inline CSS excellent, external inline CSS. Yes, we have done that. You can see this is my inline. This was this one is my internal. And this one is external. That's it. OK, so last 10 minutes. I hope you are ready to learn again. <clears throat> If not, then we can end the session. But I think you are interested to learn more topics so that tomorrow we can focus on the uh, various uh, controls, OK, properties. So what is next? The next is CSS selectors. So uh, this will be a last topic. Don't worry, guys. Then we will end up this uh, web series for the today's session. That is a day two. OK. So CSS selector are used to find a HTML element based on their element name, ID, and class. OK, so the first will be a element selector, then ID selector, and the class selector. So let's take a demonstration on each element selector. So for an example, this is element selector. So let's say if I specify, <clears throat> if I specify the P tag, so this p tag uh, will check whether your p tag is there in or not in your HTML page. If p tag is there, then this will change the text alignment and text color. OK, so this is called as an element selector. For an example, let me give you a demonstration for that. So where is this p tag? So this is my p tag, p tag 1, p tag 2, and p tag 3. So if I specify p, so p is my element selector. OK, so I can specify the color and the color will be uh, sandy brown. So if I refresh this, so you can see the color is changed. I hate this background color. Let me change this color again. I love tomato, but I hate this tomato color. OK, so here you can see the P element will check and it will replace the designing. OK. So what is next? So next is, let's say, the ID selector. The ID selector is use ID attribute of an HTML of an HTML element to select a specific element. OK, 
the id of an element must be unique within a page and the select an element with a specific id write a has has value we have to write for an example you can see uh, here we have specify one id the id name is demo right so let's say if you want to specify a designing for single uh, element right only for single element then we have to uh, define as a id so let's say uh, if i say this is my id that is a demo okay so let's say if i specify id uh, my id okay so this is my id and for that we have to use a has symbol my id the color is okay first time actually i'm using this kind of colors you can see it's changed but let's say if i use the same id over here you can see it's changed right but let's say the id what is use of id the select element with a specific id write a particular has so if we talk about the class right so class attribute select a multiple element let's say if you want to specify in a multiple element so let's say uh, my class so the class will starts with a dot right with dot you can define your class okay and then i can specify a uh, color color will be the color is very easy to identify that's why i'm using a color attribute every time you can also specify the font size right larger smaller okay so here you can specify the class class name is you can see this is my class so it's that right so for an example if you want to use a same designing uh, in a multiple control then you can define the class okay okay so let me give a next so for an example uh, we can see this is my class okay and you can also specify your colors as i told you before we can specify the color in a red in rgb and also we can define the color in a hash value okay so that's it for the today uh, tomorrow we will discuss about the more in the css and also in a bootstrap okay so today uh, you know very well we have seen a various topics okay uh, how to blink a text in different color like blue red tomorrow i will give you a demo in a css3 for that don't worry okay so i think so that's it for the today okay so it's hand over to the uh, hiren sir so guys thank you so much for joining today and thank you so much for the day two okay see you again tomorrow at the same time if you have any question if you have any doubts you can write in the comment section okay okay uh, thank you thank you very much akash sir for the wonderful session okay id we can define in a single time i know it's a common question and class we can define in a multiple times okay so hiren sir yes sir. yes sir thank you thank you very much akash sir for the wonderful okay. session uh now i would like to uh, ask the participant if they have any question they can write to the chat box otherwise we will be uh, winding up the today's session i think we already have the questions in the chat box so there are there are the session was so wonderful and well explained so we are like not having this too much of questions so thank you thank you very much akash sir so we will be meeting again tomorrow at the same time thank you sir okay. so see you in tomorrow the yes and on uh, the instruction of the participant we will share this link uh, updated youtube link on tomorrow morning 9 am and on your email id Thank you thank you very much all of you bye bye